Heel tapes here, back playing some more Planet Zoo, and I'm back in Tigwadu Zoo, so it's been a little while, but I am super excited to share with this one with you. So this has been coming for a little while. It's been, been something I've been beavering away, as you'll have seen from the timeline below. It is quite a long episode, this one. It's a bit longer than my usual ones, um, but hopefully, hopefully you're all right with waiting for these episodes, because this one I'm super proud of. I have kind of rammed a whole bunch of stuff into this one. Um, as you'll have seen from the title and the thumbnail, this is uh, namely a capybara and uh, Malaysian tapir habitat, co kind of cohabitat, and yeah, put them in together. Um, and yeah, so I haven't used the capybara since they came out, and they're actually really cool. So I was quite excited to get get going with this one. Loads and loads of detail in. As ever, there's not enough time in the speed build. Uh, for me to kind of show you everything so there will be a whole bunch of things that you'll see later on as we do the tour um, that, that are not captured in this so if you can kind of roughly work out where we are from the speed build here we are just behind the arctic fox habitat so the arctic fox habitat and the uh, macaque monkeys the indoor bit of the macaque monkeys is just kind of behind this rock wall and um, so what i had um, is a, a little kind of t little backstage access or in sort of implied backstage access path along the back of that that wall that you see there and you can see that little those two little doors there um, so we're breaking that away we're sort of separating that coming back down towards the path this is the path that goes round or eventually will go round towards seal beach uh if you remember that bad boy from a long long time ago and um, i have been doing some upgrades to that so that will be coming in a future episode so yeah i just wait this to kind of feel a little bit more um yes they're obviously a an asian uh creature an asian animal so this wants to feel a little bit different it's a little bit different in terms of its kind of theming and its overall kind of aesthetic to uh the platypuses that we did in the last episode but it's got somewhat similar little i don't know little vibes that are similar uh, because they're obviously an aquatic animal or they're an animal that likes the, the, the water uh they are an animal that sp spends a lot of their time kind of on the on the river banks uh, both the tapirs and the and the cappies both like those so yeah and and just to sort of continue with this kind of slowly scruffy aesthetic of tickle do that i'm really still enjoying doing um i know there's gaps between the episodes guys but and that is a combination of both kind of just real time life things going on but also um I'm, yeah i just i'm i'm actually really enjoying getting to spend a lot longer on the habitats and the, and the builds um and then yeah hopefully you get a bit more of a big bang it's a bigger episode takes a bit longer to, to watch and there's but there's so much more i mean i could have probably have made this an hour long this episode hopefully we don't get anywhere close to that at the time of recording i don't know where we'll get to so yeah done this rock wall this is the first of two um water in fact actually three water sections uh for these two animals um and they they are able to use both of these uh, as you can see there's kind of an underwater viewing section there um, and then we're moving into again one of two indoor spaces so i have to i decided to kind of give the tapirs and the capybaras their own spaces this is actually supposed to be the tapirs habitat or the sorry the, the tapirs indoor shelter um so using the planks that or the slat pieces these new slats uh as you can see down the slat beam thick and slat beam thin are so useful um i think they came in the conservation pack but yeah just thought i'd do a little yeah a little slightly different shape a little bit more of an irregular shape and then you can see me trying to kind of fit that into the space there see we're right up against the arctic foxes that building that you're seeing in the background or this cage for example is part of the arctic fox habitat so i've plopped that down um and then i started to, to detail as you know if you've watched me before I'm someone that very much loves detailing in Planet Zoo. It's probably my most favourite thing. I actually think I prefer the detailing of the backstage areas than I do of the front areas. I tend to find that the habitats themselves are always actually more simple to do than like good realistic looking backstage backstage sections. So you'll have to let me know 
when we come to the end of this episode wherever I've achieved anywhere close to, to good backstage detailing, but we shall see. So this is supposed to be like a little kind of slot feeder, so a little uh, a little thing that you'd open, so you'd sort of twiddle that, that bit on the right there, that, um, and then this would open up and you'd be able to, to push some food into into the habitat without going in there obviously that's not really a massive problem for an animal like this or these two animals friendly enough and um, quite normal for, for zookeepers to go into these habitats but yeah just for the sake of it really just for the sake of funsies i thought i'd, I'd add this in so yeah you could see um yeah how that would work you just open that slot and you've got um we've got one actual gate into this habitat but there are various places where i'm implying access so I'm now bringing round, trying to soften this edge off. I'm really keen to kind of hide all of that away, all of that ugly building side away from the guest view because obviously the guests looking into this habitat aren't going to want to see that. So I thought I'd just continue this rock round. Um, there are actually going to be, I probably should mention this, but there are actually going to be a number of things uh, from this episode uploaded to the workshop. So this, the, So that first shelter that you've just seen, uh, will be one of them if there is something that i haven't uploaded um, and linked in the description usually what i do is i link it in the collection so there'll be there's a there's a tigwadu collection that's getting kind of ever bigger if there's something that you see in the episode that i haven't linked then do feel free to um, drop me a comment or hit me up on twitter or something probably the best way to go um, and then yeah i will i will do so but yeah so i've just got playing around trying to soften that edge off quite happy with the way that came out and now we're actually down um i've added this uh, this other little kind of indented path section and an actual view for the guests into the habitat as you can see them kind of up on the back there and then i've, I've set everything on a bit of a slope here so um yeah good kind of technique for i think a lot of people do do this but you see this very often in zoos obviously you want to make sure that the further back the animal is in the habitat uh yeah if they're kind of towards the back of the habitat you still want guests to be able to see them so um a sort of gently ascending slope is a is a, a good way of doing that lots of foliage in this one lots of kind of scruffy roughness as you see uh i've added quite a lot of the texture in you know various different uh paint brush techniques going on in there just to just to kind of make it look a bit more realistic a good a good trick for doing that and again something that you see quite a lot of um, content creators and and people building habitats do but it's quite a good tip is just to make sure that you use your kind of try and like mark out paths that you think the animals would use so let see if you can imagine that the um when you're in a habitat your grass will grow in sections there where uh there's kind of less footfall so less tread of the animal so you can see i've kind of marked out a few routes here here and there where I'm imagining the animals would be pathing. What I've done in this episode, actually, and you might have seen if the, the beady eye of, 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 of the, the more kind of beady eye astute of you will have noticed a few things uh, pop up here and there in the background that I haven't shown you me building yet. Um, and that is because what I tend to done in this episode, my, my brain is a bit scattergun in the way that I build. So... I tend to build a little bit erratically. I don't tend to just sort of sit down and start building, you know, one section. What I tend to do is jump around a bit. So um, you might have noticed a few things in the background. Don't worry, I will be showing you that later. I've just edited it in a way that, you know, I've started off with me building the habitat and then there'll be a few other bits later on that I build. So we are now into a... So this is, as I said, there's two shelters. So this is actually the Capybara shelter. And what I decided to do with this one is give it a little bit of a different aesthetic. This is actually right down on the path level. So right down where the guests are. Um, and I was keen to make sure that I uh, facilitated a way for the animals to get moved in and out of the habitat. Um, you won't see this until we see do the real time tour, but that other the actual habitat gate that I have doesn't have vehicle access to it. Now Topi is a reasonably sized animal, um, not so much of a problem with the cappies, but the the, the tapir is a reasonably sized, so you probably would need some sort of vehicle to move them. Um, and the actual habitat gate I have leads only to a set of stairs. This is my 
this particular path that we've got here and I've kind of planned this all out this has a wide enough um, road alongside it that will always mean that there is a way back to the loading dock so you know in this kind of implied roller door here that allows you to get into the habitat uh, bring the animal out and load it into a vehicle so yeah this one actually ends up being quite nice I quite like this one it's got this kind of uh, yeah little little uh, glass gable that lets loads of light in and then it's got a couple of little details like you'll see with a with a roller door and then a roller door out to the into the actual habitat um, I think I will end up putting this one up on the workshop as well so um, feel free to grab that if you like and it's made in the same sort of aesthetic as I've used in a couple of other places within Tigwood already it's that that rolled log sort of thing which I think fits really well to the kind of Tega, um, Tega setting that I'm in so yeah, just adding a bit more detail. Yeah, as I said, I wanted to make sure this looked like it was a, a door that you could kind of open up, get properly into the habitat. Probably a little bit small for the keeper to get in and out of, but it's fine. Um, and then, yeah, adding, adding a few more uh, bits and pieces around that. So I think we are... It, it's actually really exciting. By the end of this episode, I mean, I hope you agree, but by the end of this episode, a big chunk forward has happened. And actually there are two or three things in the pipeline uh, that I'm working on within both Tigwadu and Zimba um, and I'm actually at the stage now where I've got you know I have about a terabytes worth of video footage already recorded that I'm editing um, and as I said I tend to work in a little bit of a scattergun approach so yeah there'll have been weeks have, have gone by where I've been working on Tigwadu and then I'll switch a little bit do some progress on, on Zimba so if you're missing Zimba um, it's coming soon. I think most of mostly Tigwadu is people's favourites. Do let me know in the comments, guys, actually, which you, which you prefer. Um, I think I've said this before, but I kind of really enjoy having both. Um, that was just kind of the way my brain works, is that being able to switch backwards and forwards sometimes to work on um, different aesthetics is, is kind of really useful. So, yeah, just a little bit of polishing here and there, adding a bit more um, detail in. As you can see, the habitat is getting really kind of quite well developed now um and then yeah just just trying to make make these make make the aesthetics of the the guest state parts a little bit softer um i do and eventually end up adding some education boards and things which i don't think i've got in the speed build but again you'll see that when we get to the real time tour right so this is the second section of this video so i'm now working on decided i mean i've been playing around with this idea for a while um, but i decided to uh, i really wanted to get some some guest cabins in so what i've decided and this is something that i've never done it myself but i have been always desperately wanting to stay in you know a number of zoos have these like cabins where you can stay overnight you get like an overnight experience uh there's a number that i've looked at and a couple in particular that really inspired me the trouble is they're very very expensive to, to do but they you might have seen i might put some i'll probably put some images up for you to to look at come with some of the inspiration that i came up with so yeah just putting in some details um so this wanted to have like glass sliding doors i i sort of decided that i wanted these to have a slightly more modern aesthetic than i've done before hence the the glass obviously the key to something like a cabin would be that you get a good view of the zoo so you know either you get a view into a habitat or you get a view that you would get uh yeah as, as kind of like a morning view before the zoo opens so that's what a lot of these a lot of zoos do this i'm not sure actually how many how many of the big zoos um have these but i know like london zoo has an option for uh for staying overnight and then there's yeah there's a few places that have it so you can actually see i've put one so i did the sort of first stab at it there so you can sort of see it on the left hand side there i've already created one but i'm going back and doing it again something that you don't see me do that often in the speed build but tends to be that um yeah i think i've said this before as well i don't ever record straight like this is heavily heavily edited as you'll be able to see and that is because 
I build and I rebuild um, and then I bin the footage of the stuff that I, I didn't keep. So what you're seeing in the background there is the first attempt at doing it. I originally was deciding to kind of have a uh, use the, the actual roof pieces and then I decided to create this custom roof set. So I'm then using my own roof set. So yeah, I've put the I've put the kind of rough floor print or footprint down of that of that first cabin, and then I'm going back and fiddling around with it. So I wanted to have, as I said, I wanted to have the the inner aesthetic have a fairly modern feel, a bit of a contrast of a kind of modern and rustic going on. Um, these end up being, I don't think you see too much of me doing this, but there is they're all interior. Um, yeah, all the interiors are done for these as well. So all the rooms within all of these cabins will be something we'll be seeing in the real time tour. So yeah, something to something often often to consider when you're. I mean that makes it very much harder. But when you're when you're working on a building, um, yeah, actually having the interior spaces be be something that you can go in and look at makes it considerably harder because you don't you can't really get away with anything. You can't get away with having um like ov overlapping roof lines and things you have to kind of go back and polish it all and, and make it all look nice so you'll see that in a second i've decided at a different pitch on this kind of extended se section um, because i wanted this like overhanging sheltery part and then i have to go and fix all of these <laughs> all of these um inner sections and this was actually the reason why i decided to make my own custom roof rather than use uh, one of the in-game pieces because obviously you can't do that with a you can't do what i'm doing here with the um the, the, the prefab bits of of roof you have to you have to do it yourself so this is a lot of work all massively reduced down into into a very small bit of the speed build because i'm sure it would be incredibly boring for everyone to watch me do this but man this is painstaking um you have to get all of the angles right as you can see, it starts to come together. It's a very, very slow process. Lots and lots of patience required to do this sort of thing. Um, but hopefully, when you see it, you'll appreciate the, the um, yeah. I think the aesthetic of it worked out really well. So putting a little deck around it. Obviously, the key to this is we want to make sure that the guests get a nice view uh, when they're eating their breakfast and when the zoo's closed, or uh, so that they get to kind of yeah experience a different version of the zoo than everybody else does that path that you're actually seeing and where we're sitting here um is a path that i've had for a while you'll see a bit of this track in the real time tour and I've, and I've done more work to it but this is actually a track that goes from the loading bay um and that actually if you remember right back to the episode where we built the car park the loading bay is accessible from the front car park via a gate um and so in theory this is a route that can be driven you can drive all the way through from the from the car park and the road the exterior road into um, the loading bay and then out and down this hill um, and eventually that ends up linking round to the rest of the zoo and so that's one of the ways in which you can get um, yeah they can move animals around and things so you've seen me put a little yeah put a balcony on that put a few um, bench pieces and things I mean this was just running away uh, ideas kind of running away with me by this stage i really got inspired by the idea of the capybaras using uh, enjoying hot water and i don't remember when this happened but at some point in my brain i had the thought that um, and i think this actually might have been one of the things that sparked the whole decision to build these cabins is i thought wouldn't it be amazing for guests to be able to have a jacuzzi <laughs> alongside a hot a hot bath for um capybaras so that's what we're basically setting out to achieve here so yeah building out this like spa bath thing jacuzzi um can't remember what the other word of, word is for it but um and then yeah so there's going to be one of these for this cabin and there's actually a second cabin i'm going to build in a minute as well so both of these get that and then there is a uh, an accessible pool uh, which is you know, pretending has got hot water in it for the cappies to get in. So yeah you can see I've added a little bit of parking there. So this would be the parking for this cabin and you can see I've put a footprint down for the next one. So 
So, cabin two, much larger. Um, and I think I probably will end up copying these round into a couple of places. I might do a few little variations of them. But So this was intended to be a much larger habitat. I wanted it to, uh, sorry, a much larger cabin. I wanted it to feel different, but not, um, not too different from the previous one. So in the same sort of style with a few variations. Previous cabin, so cabin one, is actually only got one bedroom. This one's supposed to have, uh, I think it ends up being big enough for kind of, I don't know, like six people or something. And and so, yeah, I wanted it to feel a bit different. So there's the there's my roof. So I built a new roof set for that one or a slightly different um, shape of roof for that, different pitch. But you can still see I'm using those same the pieces. And the, 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 yeah, what's really cool about doing that sort of thing is you can actually achieve quite a, quite a different look and feel just by using the same set but not you know not going too not 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 um not being too kind of repetitive in the shape that you use so you can see this one is much more glass fronted um and this actually ends up being i made the decision quite early on because this one's slightly further up the hill that this is actually going to be like an upside down house so if you know what an upside down house an upside down house is very simply that you have the bedrooms on the bottom and you have the living space at the top um so this one has yeah that 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 rustic stone section ends up being where uh, some of the bedrooms are housed now i made the rod for my own back here by deciding to do this but um it was a challenge to, to get these kind of two roof lines to to work together and then i had to do yeah lots of these lots of how would you get upstairs and that sort of thing so that ends up being this little this little extension on the side ends up being both the the porch entrance but also um, a stairway for you to get up to the top partly i did this because i again i didn't want the footprint of them to be massive um i didn't want it to be too too much of a visual kind of um weenie to use the silverette phrase um but i wanted it to be i wanted it to be functional i wanted the indoor space to be something that you can imagine using and again have have that kind of exclusive look on the on the habitat so i've added in some glass stairs again keeping that keeping that mixed kind of aesthetic of both the modern and the rustic there so i really like that and i think it turns out really well um, a bit of a challenge doing this and i had to mess around this with this view so i think the first time i did this i realized that the head height of being able to walk up those stairs and getting that door was very very small so you know, you'd have to kind of like bump your head up there so yeah just decided really just to add this like modern extension on the side that was the thing that would get you up up to the up to the top Tigwadu is not particularly old it's supposed to be that it was built in the 1920s or that the, the site was in uh created in the 1920s the original story i think i said back in the first episode that was it originally was like a quarry hence the the slope um, hence it all kind of looking like it goes downhill and that sort of thing um, because it was originally a, a, a quarry that's been then turned into a, um, a like a nature reserve uh, sorry an, a, a, an eco park sort of sanctuary thing and then eventually into a bit more of a zoo so we're coming right up to the end here this is the last section so there's a big jump on and again you'll see all this way more detail um, as we do the tour but yeah so this one's got its own little kind of kitchenette the other one doesn't Ca cabin one doesn't have that just has a, a um yeah like a bed and a, a bathroom and things but this one i decided to build a little kitchenette because it's yeah got the space for a number of different um, people in it so yeah i decided it kind of needed that kind of open plan living room kitchen thing which i think works out pretty well so a little sink, little draining board in, because obviously you'd need to do some washing up. And who would we do washing up when you're on holiday? I don't know. Uh, putting in these these kitchen cabinets. That is supposed to be like a butcher's bot block style um, worktop. I think it turns out right. Yeah, that kind of aesthetic. Um, and again, it's it's like the this is. Um, in fact, actually, I'm really happy with the way this kitchen turned out because it is a real. It's a real. It is the real epitome of the contrast between like modern and the rustic. So you've got the timber colours and that bit, the butcher's block thing, and then you've got these like clean, modern-looking um, door door fronts and, and drawers and things. So yeah, that's my 
yeah it's not supposed to be that it's like it's not got an oven or anything in it it's supposed to be pretty functional it's not supposed to be that you're making your own dinners and stuff because there is there are like food facilities and stuff within within team to do um uh you're supposed to just be yeah for your like yeah your, your breakfasts or whatever that sort of thing so yeah and then adding some some higher cabinets quite a lot to see in here actually in this one it's um as i said i end up quite pleased with how they've both turned out so yeah a little bit of a little bit of upper cabinetry uh, and played around with the uh, uh yeah getting this kind of feeling right so we are coming up to the end of the speed build guys i've whittled on for i know these are these are a longer episode do stick around as i said because there's a whole bunch to see in the real-time tour um, that you haven't seen up to this point i'll leave you with the last couple of minutes of this or the last little chunk of this where i'm adding some shelves in and things all right see you in a second right peeps welcome back to the tour so we are starting this this one off from where we left off in the last episode this is the bottom of the platypus habitat so this is the underwater section that we added there um and we have the little kind of aviary thing there which you guys seem to have liked up on the workshop which is pretty cool um, so we're going to make our way this way so this if you remember this is the from a previous episode this building here is the upstairs section of it is the uh inside part of the japanese macaques so there's the backstage bit and then there's the up there is the kind of um tundra section for them so obviously this section is not all done but just to give you a context so this is this plaza all needs to be sorted out just to give you context of where we're about in in the zoo we are so if we make our way over here definitely getting a little bit more framey if you're noticing that as i move around but it's feeling a little bit more framey i think generally whenever there's like water effects and stuff that always makes things a bit more framey so here's my first kind of underwater section of the cappies and tapirs. Are they in there at all? You can get in this section. They quite like splashing around here. So yeah, I thought I'd give give a few options actually for the guests to come and view to hang out. So I think that's all. I think that's worked out quite good in the background because that that building will make our way round there in a little bit, but. That building, as I said, is the um, the inside of the Arctic foxes. So there's like a path and a walkway there. You can just about make out the, the cover that I put over it. So yeah, lots of rock details and things. So what we'll do on the left-hand side of this path. So the left-hand side of this path, we're right button up against Seal Beach here. Obviously that side, it all needs to be done as well. So there's the first view of the cabins. I think that would be... I think that would be crazy cool to be able to hang out in one of those cabins wake up in the morning before the guests arrive and have a look at the animals hanging out in their in their little spots so what we'll do is we'll make our way around the outside so you get the kind of guest eye view of it um, and then we'll make our way up to the cabins take a look inside those obviously there's a whole bunch of detail that i haven't showed you in there um, and then we'll come down inside the habitat well, I'll look at the backstage area and then we'll have a have a look inside the habitat so you can see some of the details. So just in time for feeding by the looks of it, here comes one of the keepers. So yeah, we've got another education board. If you haven't seen my episodes before, I've been this zoo has got this kind of geometric um animals thing going on. Seems like the capybaras tend to use the tapirs shelter. That one up there is supposed to be the tapir shelter. They're supposed to come down and use this one, but I guess it doesn't really matter. So yeah, all quite rough and ready in there. All quite shabby looking. Oh, it looks like they're having not actually seen do that before. So they're having a chomp on a bit of watermelon. Nice. So yeah, that's the main kind of inside the habitat view they have got a little bit of privacy actually in there obviously they can go inside the shelters but kind of if they go towards the back of the habitat they're a little bit harder to spot so we'll make our way around this side so i don't think you see this one at all in the speed build but here's another 
underwater section. Oh, well, right on time, the tapir's hanging out in there. So he's doing his little thing. I saw I decided I, yeah, there was no real reason why I'd mix these two together, but I just thought it would be fun. Can you get out? Yeah, well done. I thought it'd be fun to have a mixed habitat because I haven't kind of done that before. But yeah, as I said, this is all kind of deliberately accessible. So you should be able to eventually drive a vehicle along this path and get to all the rest of the zoo. So we'll make our up here. Obviously, all this all this needs to be finished. All this left-hand side needs to be finished. And then as you see up here, there's some like temporary fencing. So that all needs to be done at some point. I've got an idea for what that's going to be. So if we make our way up here and we can visit cabin one, as I said, this is the smaller of the two cabins. Just supposed to be for like a couple, uh, a couple kind of on a, I don't know, a romantic, <laughs> romantic evening or something. So there's their parking spot. Um, and then we can step down onto their deck. And they have their own jacuzzi, as you saw from the speed build. Um, that one actually is a better one because that gives you closer access to the to where the animals. But you do get a pretty good view from this from this deck here. Try not to give you too much of a flash of the changes to Seal Beach there, but so yeah, you get your kind of overview. Quite a nice overview on the on this pool particularly and then the habitat itself so let's do inside so quite a small this one um, but kind of functional it has everything you need um i have ended up using can't remember if you see this in the speed build but i had a i had a uh, a sofa that i built myself uh largely just out of these cushion pieces and then it just looked a bit of a mess i shared it on my discord asked a few people and I ended up finding this one from Drax. So if you don't know Drax, have a check out of Drax's stuff on the on the workshop. It'll be linked in the collection. He's just got like loads of really good little workshop items. He's a kind of a master of the small pieces. He's done all sorts of stuff. Um, but this is one, this is based on one of his. I've adapted it a bit, uh, but yeah, I can't take credit for that. But yeah, I think that works out pretty well. They've got this like, you know, a little TV screen that's got like a, you know, in theory that's like a screensaver or whatever. And then, yeah, as I said, pretty small. No kind of catering facilities in this one. Uh, just a bed. Your towels and things. Some clean towels. What more do you need? And then you have a, a little, a little kind of, oh, little shower in here. Again, some workshop things that I've lifted. So these are, these two... The sink and the toilet are from Shifty. Again, great content creator. I think Shifty mostly does stuff on Twitch. Uh, but yeah, he's got a bunch of he's got a bunch of really good uh, things on the workshop. And then I then I created the shower and and that. Uh, and then this is supposed to be like a, a tail rail. That's actually I think that's actually one of the carts. One of the kind of trolley things that we got in um, the the conservation pack. So that's that one. That is cabin one. Okay, so making our way up to cabin two then. So the larger of the two cabins. Um, and a decision I made actually, you might notice that there's no windows. There's a window, there's kind of a little window there and a little window there, but no windows on the actual, on these sides. Um, that was intentional. That's, and obviously this is supposed to be a bit of a working part of the zoo there's going to be vehicles coming up down here staff going up and down this track so it's supposed to not be that you're focused on that it's supposed to be focusing the other way so again they have their own little parking bay which is tucked underneath the kind of ups upside down part um, and then they have their own jacuzzi and this is probably one of the best views into the into the habitat that you get but that is the the animals jacuzzi so I haven't actually seen them up in this yet, but they definitely can get round there. So that slope is not too steep for them to get around and they can get past that post and into the water. They have got a bit of an abundance of water, so it might just be that they're not that bothered about using that. But yes, yeah, so I'm yet to see them I yet to see them using it. But yeah, I just thought it was be I mean it's a silly idea. 
but I just I just thought it'd be really fun to have just the idea of you being able to have a jacuzzi next to a capybara maybe having a jacuzzi who knows where these ideas come from I don't know sometimes but yeah we'll make our way round so if we scoot on round the side of this guy past this staff member yeah so there you go look no windows facing back this way so if we push on inside so as I said this is an upside down one so a lot of this detail you won't have seen but this is the this is the most of the accommodation for this guy for this cabin so we have again a little um, shower toilet and shower uh, with a little pocket door there and that is serving both a twin cabin so quite small this one but a twin cabin with a built-in wardrobe and then next door we have I would say this is probably the premium the premium suite so this is the double bed overlooking this this picture window which gives you the perfect view into the pool into the habitat sorry with a the jacuzzi pool there the view down to the bits where they hang out tend to hang out quite a lot under this tree so um, and they're not really much space in this one so I decided just to give them like this little implied that they had this little tea chest to store their stuff in so a few little details I think they came out quite cozy actually ceilings a bit low in here because it's um it's obviously it's an upside down building so if we go up the stairs so up this modern glass stairway and then we come in through this little this little gap and I have to say this was the probably I think I mentioned this in the speed build but this getting these two roofs to uh just to kind of marry up nicely was a real pain <laughs> so I think I pulled it off you'll have to let me know in the comments but I, I just the, just the sort of awkward sh steps and shapes and things so you know, I think that actually all flows quite nicely together now but yeah getting these getting these sorts of shapes together to mesh neatly and look and look real and not look kind of messy is a, is a real challenge sometimes in the game oh I've got a couple of couple of random bits that I need to fix there so then we have another bedroom so a third bedroom up on this floor pretty simple another quite a simple double up here looks like there's some messy bits there that I need to fix it's a never-ending job it's a never-ending job so they again just have a built-in wardrobe uh, I mean the idea basically that you wouldn't really want to spend that much time in these bedrooms that you'd be you'd be focused on being out in this in this living space this is where it's at so again nice big kind of living room lounge kind of area radiator this one because it's bigger has got the kitchenette no actual kind of cooking facilities and things but you know for making kind of teas and breakfasts and stuff like that uh thought that would be pretty cool and then yeah the piece de resistance is obviously the the view over the actual habitat just as you watch them cleaning up the poo but yeah this is a, again a good view oh he's going crazy it's crazy times Right, so we'll go round. What we'll do is we'll I'll show you again how we kind of get back to the Oh and there's a little bathroom in there as well that I forgot to show you. Oh, come on game. It's a little bathroom in here, much of the same as the other one. So obviously the showers and stuff are downstairs, so just the toilet and toilet and sink in that one. So if we go back down here, just so you can see where this all is. So this is if you remember this is back past the quarantine heading off towards the loading base we built this a number of episodes ago still got that still got that poor sun bear hanging out in there in quarantine my friend you'll get you'll get released at some point I'm sure uh, so yeah past the past the loading bay that way so as I said vehicles will be able to come in and out and access the all of the zoo all of the major parts of the zoo anyway so we'll go back down this set of stairs so you can see the the staff access into the back of the habitat or the actual habitat gate so if you remember from a few episodes ago that's the prairie dogs that seems like a, a long time ago now don't know why it's, it's having a little bit of struggle getting my uh, camera moving properly and then yeah so this is the back backstage access this area did exist a while ago I just gave it a bit of a, a jazz up so that is the Arctic foxes 
inside area of the Arctic foxes, outside area of the Arctic foxes. Uh, and then I, I can't remember if I had this. I don't think I had this, this little utility, kind of little utility area um, with some details, little tap and things. Just again, to bring it all back to life. It's one of those like finishing things. I'm trying not to go back into every area that I've previously built and change it, but sometimes it just kind of feels like it happens. There's my little, there's my little kind of slot feeder thing. Anyone who works in a zoo, let me know what those are actually called. So we just push our head through this door. So this is the inside. This is supposed to be the tapir shelter, but interchangeable with a little door that they can they can close obviously as i said the, the keepers are welcome to come in and out not sort of the animal you have to worry about being in the habitat with the animal oh we're up on the roof again can we get down now okay let's jump down so much easier now you've got this camera mode i have to say to, do, to be able to just do that so and then we have an implied so i mean it, it, it's one of those things the airlock systems that um zoos have usually this like so it's not a major problem for an animal like this to you know fit for you to kind of push past an animal like this but effectively this is if you think if you didn't have that double door you're opening a door and then you're largely just kind of letting an animal potentially letting an animal out um so these are all implied but that's my kind of airlock system for this um and then i love these double these little low level gates arguably you might say that that's probably actually a bit low for a capybara and that they might be able to jump over it but i kind of wanted to use them i thought they looked nice so into the actual habitat so yeah i think it's turned out pretty good pretty happy with the way it's turned out as you can see the little swimming pool as i said i kept it all really kind of quite overgrown and rough looking quite like that as an aesthetic for Tigwudu. I think that kind of scruffy style is really working pretty well. So let's just show you the last little bits then from this side. So as we come down you can see that last pool. Just a little bit of water detail, nothing too crazy going on there. I think that one will be nice once it's once the other side of the path is finished. Um, and then as I said, this is a little bit low, but this is the the shutter door for keepers to get the animals in and out. So that's it for this one, peeps. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it. It's been a long one. So if you're here at the end, you are superstars. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Tobes. Do not forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Take it easy.